Hello and welcome to another Adam and Joe podcast coming to you this week from the Virgin Megastore in London's Piccadilly Circus. Used to be Tower Records, uh, they've turned it into Virgin. And you know what? Something depressing is happening in here. Why? What's happening? The bottom's falling out of the market, Adam. Which market? Well, look at that. Apocalypse Now, two ninety nine. Yeah, what's all that about? Battlefield Earth, one ninety nine. Well, that's overpriced, Makes more isn't sense. it? Yeah, but Barton Fink, Barton Fink, one ninety nine. Uh, yeah. What's going on? It's look a sale. At, look at that massive pile of films. Look at that massive pile of Batman Begins. Uh-huh. Three ninety nine. And there's a but they can't get rid of them. Mm. What's happening with, with, with movies and DVDs? I tell you what's happening. What? It's the internet. Why? In what way? Oh, it's taking over. How does that affect anything? Palaces like this. Look at this amazing Virgin Megastore. Oh, we, you... we love this place. Yeah, yeah. We've been coming here for years. A cathedral to popular culture. Absolutely. And it's dying. You think it's people... like religion is dying. Really? It's like when people stopped going to church in the 1920s. <laughs> That's not historically accurate fact. <laughs> but <laughs> Sorry, you know what I'm just... trying to say. And now that the religion of, of buying crap is dying mm. all around us. And the same thing's happening in the Virgin Megastore. Yeah, it's the death of poppy crap. The death of the religion of the poppy crap culture pop religion. So, you know, kids uh, with your internet and your arctic monkeys and your pornography. And your Sam and your Tom. blogging and your I want to be a hippie nonsense. You're killing the Virgin Megastore. And here's the irony. What? Well, those are exactly the kids that work there. Oh, You're God. killing yourselves, you morons. Hey, but there's an upside. What? Well, there's something a bit rubbish about, you know, I never used to go out clubbing much. I'd just literally just go out shopping mm-hmm. to the shops on a Friday night. I'd go to the shops, you know, and yeah. have a great time. <laughs> Come back home with whatever I'd picked up, sexy little number <laughs> I'd picked up <laughs> in the shop. <laughs> and uh, spend the night together. <laughs> Until the next time I went out to the shop. That's still what you do, though. It is kind of still what I do. <laughs> is it not what you do? <laughs> not really. No, I've tried mm. to minimise my shopping. Mm. I mean, I don't. I don't. Hey, you're suddenly being serious, as if that is what I did. That is what you do. Sometimes it's what Cal- I did. That's what we both did, man. I remember. Well, now, most... now, well, that's better. Now, at least you're counting yourself in. Oh yeah, no, no. Friday night certainly, we'd go out to the West End and we just wander around. I'm the exaggerating. I'm exaggerating. For effect, uh-huh. I did used to go clubbing, a lot, <laughs> and to discos and boy oh boy, every now and then I'd just go to the shops. <laughs> and you know, my point is that it's good that that's over. Mm-hmm. You know, get rid of shops, I say. Social spaces instead. We'll be back shortly. My space. But uh, now it's time to do celebrity regression. If you're new to our Saturday morning slot and you haven't heard this quiz before, what happens is we regress Adam using a technique painted by... Toya was it Wilcox. Phil and Fern or Toya Wilcox? I think uh, Toya Wilcox developed it and Phil and Fern did the final tweet. Yeah. On. Uh, this is a, you know, medically, scientifically proven method of uh, mental regression. Adam will go into the mind and movies of a famous film star... And he'll wake up, he'll be in a trance state, he'll witness some of the scenes from that film happening around him and he'll describe what he sees. You have to listen carefully and as soon as you can guess the name of the star whose body Adam is inhabiting and the names of the film he's in, call and you could win those tickets. So we ring the regression bell to get the correct new age atmosphere. That's nice. So everyone very relaxed. And Adam, take a deep breath. <sighs> and relax. <laughs> and drift back, clear your mind. <laughs> Imagine you're on a desert island in space. Oh. And now, clear that from your mind. There's nothingness. <laughs> Complete blackness. <laughs> and now you're going back. Back, 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 back. Back into the mind of a Hollywood star. <laughs> and now, wake up. And tell us what you see. <gasps> oh, I'm in the great big tent with me dad. It's cold outside. At least I, I think it's cold. I think it's snow, but it's all just bits floating around. So it could just be atmospheric fluff floating about for no reason, like in King Arthur or Legend. <laughs> anyway, me and me dad have gone camping with some mates. I say camping, it's more like a campaign, like a kind of military campaign. But anyway, it's going well, and we're in the tent, and we're having a chat about some stuff that my dad's got. 
which I want. But he's saying he's not going to give it to me. So I'm thinking about strangling him until he's dead. I mean, you know, it seems a bit much, but I am a bit much. So I think I will strangle him until he's dead and then I can get the stuff. <laughs> there we go, that's film number one. Let's uh, hear film number two. Ab, wake up, tell us what you can see. <laughs> oh, I'm in a little room. Backstage somewhere. I just done a concert and it were okay, quite good. Um, but there were a girl I fancied and I asked her out on stage and she said no. And I got angry and now I'm all drunk up and on drugs too. And I just smashed up the room and I ripped the basin off the well and um, now I'm having a bit of a cry. And I'll, I'll probably tell someone about the basin later because there's water going everywhere all over the room because of the smashed basin. So I'll need a plumber, you know, but you won't see that, the scene just ends here with me crying on the floor. <laughs> Adam's gone back into his trance. Here's the third and final film. Remember, as soon as you know who it is, 0871-222-1049. Ad, wake up, tell us what you can see. <gasps> I'm in the little cupboard with me mate. I'm hiding from an alien man. He, wa he wants to come in the cupboard, but he can't because we haven't seen him so far. And it's dead exciting. And so if he did come in, it would just be like, oh, there's a crap alien man. And that, that would be a shame. So we're keeping him out, outside the cupboard, by shoving a knife under the door and waving it about. But the alien man doesn't like it, so he's going. Unfortunately, later on, he comes into the room and you see him and it is a bit crap. But right now, it's all dead exciting. <laughs> there we go. Adam's going to remain in his hypnotic trance until somebody calls in and rescues him from the nightmare of being trapped inside the mind in the films of a Hollywood star. For God's sake, call now. This is XFM. Text competition, yes. And this week I was thinking about, um, about, about petty crime. Joe Cornish. Now, well, you were always thinking about petty crime. Oh, that's you? true. Do you like think fingers Buxton? Do you think of me as a bit of a crim? No. No. Okay. Good. Good. Because uh, you know, I, I've done, I've done a bit of, uh, I've done a bit of theft in my time. We're not now. We're not talking about real theft. Right? No, absolutely we're not. We're not talking about. No, 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 no. Because no, we straight, no, we, no, st no. we straight into. We're uh, talking about kind of char childhood petty theft, right? Yeah. yeah th these are these are, are, are crimes that you commit, sort of. Bef on a on a kind of instinctive basis yeah and we don't condone it in fact we may if you enter this text competition we might pass your details onto the coppers yeah exactly we certainly don't want to hear about any kind of um stealing from uh people's houses or anything <laughs> like that we're just talking about low level criminal activity hit us with your story adam well my my first my introduction to the shady world of crime came when i suppose i must have been about uh, f four or five. This is l one of my formative memories. Right. Earliest memories that I've got s uh, stashed away in my brainium. And we were at the uh, corner shop. The this is in the days when my ma and pa used to smoke I know the corner cigs. shop. Yeah. So we, were, we lived in Earl's Court and uh, we were at the corner shop. My dad was buying some cigs. And I, I know that I was incredibly young because the only shelf I could see was the absolute bottom shelf. I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't see anything above mm. that. And that's where all the sweeties were. And someone had knocked a packet of Wrigley Spearmint Gum off the shelf and it was just lying on the floor. <sighs> Calling your name. Yeah, and I was the only one down there at that level. Mm. And I was looking at it, I was thinking, free gum free gum it's not on the shelf and i remember very clearly the logic process that i used to lie to myself to justify this theft because even at that stage i knew that it would be stealing but i remember thinking it's fallen off the shelf they n they don't want it anymore it's broken and they they can't sell that yeah the floor is put the, the floor is no man's land yeah isn't that actually legally true i think that anything on any floor anywhere is anybody <laughs> if it's on a shelf <laughs> that it's different it belongs to the owner but the generally floors. the floors are free they're like beaches yeah you know and the sea that's Anyone what ronnie biggs them. said in his defense i believe is it it was on the floor the what? gold fell on the floor well, you look, i was a pro i don't understand the problem <laughs> it was on the floor <laughs> so anyway cut a long story short i shoved the the wriggles in my pockles and got home and went into uh, uh, went into my room, and, you know, and I was fairly brazen about it because I didn't believe I'd committed a massive crime. But my even dad, even though you had, even though I had, I've done, I've done a bit of stealing of wriggles. Mm. And my dad found me 
uh, happily chomping some uh, wriggles. Tricky to get rid of the evidence, right? <laughs> yeah. Chew it. You shouldn't swallow it either, because it just comes out at the other end exactly the same. Exactly. And the police can forensic it. Yeah. And he said, where did you get this gum? I didn't buy you any chewing gum. You're not allowed gum. And I, I said, it was in the... Oh, I got it in... It was on the, f on the floor. It was broken. And he said, you've just stolen something. This is stealing, Adam. You stole this. You didn't pay for it. We could go to prison. If the police found out, you could go to prison. There are kids in prison for stealing gum. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, they come out I and they're all... at Wrigley's prison. That's right. Yeah. And they're all messed up when they come out. And apparently, yeah, it's, it's awful in the Wrigley's prison. There's gum everywhere. There is gum everywhere. Um, anyway, so I was very freaked out. And, and to make his point even more... Uh, forcefully, my dad burnt the gum. <laughs> well, your dad always does weird things at the end. Why did he burn the gum? <laughs> Gum's not even flammable, is well, it? Well, exactly. It took ages. All the gum kind of... <laughs> I sat there. Why don't you burn? <laughs> it's like a sort of a hellfire response, isn't it? It's like he's a Baptist minister. That's right. You shall not chew the gum! <laughs> Watch it burn, my thieving friend! <laughs> and then consider whether you'd like some more Wrigley's. Watch the gum melt... And the, and the foil failed to burn, and then consider if and yeah, that's what it was like. The foil wouldn't it just the foil just went all charcoaly, and the gum mm. just kind of melted and gummed it had up. Had a kind of barbecue flavour. It was even nicer. It smelt minty. Did it? It still smelt minty. minty flames. Yeah, and the, and the minty flames went on for ages. Mint flavoured flames. Double any other length of gum, I would say, if it was burned. Anyway, so I'm curious to know if if anybody else has. So this is kind of like the most pathetic thing you've ever stolen. Yeah, pathetic. Is it, or is it like the thing you stole as a child that made you understand that stealing was wrong? Because I stole a backcopter. Did you? Yeah, from uh, from uh, a little shop in a place called Bampton in Devon. Backcopter's bigger than Wriggles, come it on. It wasn't that, well, yeah, it wasn't that big a backcopter. How old were you? About seven, eight. <gasps> and, uh, I nicked it successfully, got out of the shop, went to play with it, but it wasn't enjoyable playing with it. No. It was miserable. It's a dirty copter. I felt I betrayed Batman as well. Yeah. You know? Because he stands for truth and justice and stuff. Exactly. And I was a thief, so I stamped on it. <laughs> Did you cross yeah, the copter? I stamped on it. Wow. Because it was so unenjoyable playing with it, I destroyed it. That's what th that's what crime is like, folks, you know? It's no fun. It's Unless you're... If you don't feel that guilt, then you c it might be a good idea to make a career of it. Yeah. But, but if you do feel that guilt, it's probably not for but you. But if you don't feel that, that guilt, you know, that's... that's You're going to end up in, in prison picking up soap, you know? Yeah. One, two, three... I've got a blog, I've got a blog. Rudy, Rudy, Schmoody, Rudy, blog, blog, blog. I've got a blog. Here's the address, here's the address It's adam-bugston.co.uk So check it out Hey, this is Adam and Joe back at the Mega Store, And we've come up to the jazz department Mmm Because if you ever get, you know, annoyed by the milling crowds in the pop department Or rock Or hip-hop or, sorry, urban as it's called now mm -hmm. Then you can escape the hustle and bustle of mainstream popular culture by coming into jazz. Well, it's where I always pay for my stuff, you know. Really? To avoid the queues? To avoid the queues, I go up to the easy listening till... No one buys jazz. And, uh, no, very, very few people very few do people. buy jazz. And they walk very slowly, jazz lovers. You know, they just swing around, don't they? Yes. They swing around. They bebop about. It's lovely up here, though, isn't it? Well, the air conditioning is much more efficient in the jazz mm. department. And the great thing about the jazz department... Do you know why? Because it's cool. Yeah. And they like it cool. Yeah. It's, I love it in the jazz department. It's the best department. Absolutely. you got the big Courtney Pine cutouts. There he is. And, uh, you know, the Louis Armstrong pillows. I know that, pillows. Uh-huh. And you've got the... You've got the red skeleton sandwiches. Sandwiches? Are they selling jazz sandwiches? Yeah. Have you never had a jazz sandwich? No. Delicious. You know, of course, in the jazz department they play jazz. Yeah. Listen to this they're playing now. It's... It's quite nice. Yeah, there's a little bit of guitar. Guitar jazz. There's the guitar there. Have you ever uh, heard something playing in a shop and gone up and, and bought it? Yeah. And said, hey, what's this? Yeah, I have, yeah. What was it? Serious answer? Yeah. The Pixies. I, I've done it on many occasions. Is that the first Pixies you bought? Yeah, it was the Pixies and it was... Um, it was their first EP, Come On Pilgrim. Wow. Well, that is a very serious answer because obviously the Pixies are brilliant. Yeah, but check this out. I got home and I hated it because I didn't understand it. I was only about 14 or something mm. and it had all lots of swearing and stuff. 
and it blew my mind so completely mm. that I couldn't deal with it. No. And so I took it back. No. Yeah. And I said, I don't want this. Stupid picture. This music's broken. And I got my money back. You know, a couple of years later, I went and bought it again because it is an amazing album. But a couple of years later, you were hanging out in Frank Black's house. And there you go. Exactly. A couple of years after that, you were stalking him with emails and he wasn't returning them. A couple of years after that, <laughs> I was told never to go within 100 miles of him. Otherwise, the police would be round. Man, this jazz department's freaking me out. Why? There's only so much jazz guitar you can take. Okay. You know, you know, a massive percentage of mass murderers were jazz fans. Art Blakey's messengers of death. Yeah. What? This is, this is XFM. Channel 4, Adam. Yeah, I love them. Have been running a show called The Plays The Thing. What is it? It's basically a reality competition to try and discover a new playwright Ooh. Uh, to get their play put on in the West End. So they got thousands and thousands of entries from people who'd never had a play produced before. Mm-hmm. They whittled them down to, I think, ten and then down to three and then chose this one play. But um, it was a slightly misconceived idea because, you know, they did it very successfully with opera, that show Opportunity. Uh-huh. Yeah, Opportunity, nice. wasn't it called? <laughs> I know, I thought it I was... I didn't make up the name. Win the chance to go on Oprah. Oprah. Mm. It doesn't matter. But, uh, yeah, it didn't go very well because it takes, it takes, you know, quite a lot to write a successful play. And usually the process of getting into a play into the West End is that, you know, it's whittled down and audiences see it and it, it's proven to be good before yeah. it gets there. But this one, they didn't have that. You know, they had a limited time. So they ended up with a what looks like a crock of old poo. <laughs> <laughs> to be, but no disrespect to the lovely woman that wrote it. Yeah. But you, one did feel sorry for her because she's a victim of these sort of, you know. Again, no disrespect to the, no disrespect to anybody. No, Adam, I why think would they're you? all brilliant. But for, exactly. s- for some strange reason, this collection of brilliant people had a really stupid idea, <laughs> and it's balls, <laughs> and they've ruined the life of this woman. Even without disrespect. Even with no <laughs> disrespect, the, these brilliant people do appear to be fucking idiots <laughs> i don't know how that works <laughs> but somehow <laughs> anyway part of this show right one of the best bits of this show was they got these thousands of submissions and they had a couple of sneaky little shots uh, the voiceover was going thousands of people from across the country entered ideas on all sorts of different subjects and they had these shots of someone throwing down these manuscripts so i paused them and right. I had a look at the names of some of these plays. Bit yeah. of frame advancing and a bit of pausing. There are some bad play <laughs> names out there. And I thought this would be a good competition. What's the worst name, the most unappealing name for a play you could possibly come up with? Okay, the first one was this. A Tale of Two Dress Sizes. Would you go and see that? Because it sounds like something aimed at ladies. I don't think so, no. Imagine, because you're concerned about your weight. Don't think you're a woman. All women are. You're always going on about dress sizes. I can't believe you mentioned that. Okay, here's, <laughs> here's another one. How about this one? P.S. You're going to die. Wow. <laughs> Imagine leaving something Lots as Lots of love to the that. kids. I hope the dog gets better and we'll see you in Tuscany in June. P.S. You're going to die. <sighs> Be something like... It's dramatic, isn't it? Very dramatic. It's an afterthought. Yeah. A lethal afterthought. All right, let's move on. You'll like this one. Desperately seeking Semtex. It's like Desperately Seeking Susan, yeah. but with the contemporary twist of Semtex, the terrorist's choice for a sudden bomb. Here's another one. Don't panic, I'm Islamic. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Don't well, panic, Well, all these I'm got Islamic. rejected. These were all on the rejection pile. You want another one? Yeah. Obsessivecompulsive.com. That's one of my favourites, because you know you can make anything contemporary by putting .com after Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Or, or that was the case <clears throat> 11 years ago. <laughs> yeah. But that's it really for my list those were the only ones they showed us the one that won yeah was about uh, a woman i think she's spelunking or something and she meets a bloke What's spelunking? spelunking is cave diving I and she that meets was like a, a game where you have no no that's kaplunking okay <laughs> and she goes and basically she meets this bloke who she chats up and takes back to her flat and then within about 10 minutes this is the winning play within mm. about 10 minutes uh he goes i'm jesus Oh, that's not good, yeah. is it? She goes, what? That's it, don't be stupid. He goes, no. <laughs> As you would. I'm Jesus. <laughs> and apparently there's a scene where she washes his feet. And at the climax, there is, uh, a, like, the Last Supper. 
Uh-huh. And Elvis appears. No. Yeah. Don't let Elvis anywhere near it. And they chose this out of 30,000. There should be an absolute moratorium on Elvis. Elvis appearances. Anywhere near anything. like Because <laughs> people always think... <laughs> Elvis, and he always turns up. It's always Vegas period Elvis in his rhinestone suit and mm. his big shades and stuff. And people think, oh, this is pretty mad. Elvis turning up. <laughs> and you think, what? What are you doing? You can't, you really can't do Elvis and Jesus, no, can you, in one play? By no means. <laughs> now, Joe, have we got any, uh, a- a- any more petty crime texts we've got lots of petty crime texts yeah i've been filtering through them there are some pretty good ones here's a good technique for young kids when i was a child i used to wear my wellies to the sweet shop and drop sweets down them but the flying saucers would get soggy and stuck to my legs but i still ate them (laughs) says paul in (laughs) richmond and one of my favorite things and a theme that seems to be coming through is people who steal things and then feel incredibly guilty yeah um like for instance there's someone who i think is anonymous who stole a fiver from his mum. Right. Bought an ice cream, Uh had four pounds change, felt so guilty that he or she gave the four pound coins to four friends in the woods. (laughs) And then they all went into separate areas of the woods and buried them. Wow. Buried the pound coins. That's amazing. That's the lengths that an actual murderer might go to to hide a body. Yeah. But with coins. The, the, The film could be called The Four Coin Wood Friends. (laughs) <laughs> Could it? <laughs> no one would go and see it if it was called that. All right, then. Uh, uh, the four wood coin friends. How about this? Adam and Joe, I once stole a plastic turd from a joke shop, and a while later, they shut down. <laughs> well, <laughs> because they went out of business. Well, possibly. Margins are very tight in... Uh, were in they the w- selling the plastic turds for thousands of pounds or something? If we were... We, we, we basically, our whole business plan relied on us <laughs> selling the last turd for £5,000 <laughs> and it's gone. Yes, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> there's one... I can't find it now, but there's one... D- there's a certain type of dad or parent who overreacts to any kind... Like your dad burning the gum. Yes. There's somebody... I've lost the text now, but he did a very petty crime. <laughs> so his dad took him to prison. What? Took him to the police station and made the police stick him in a cell no to way. show him what it's like to be in prison for just stealing some sweets or something. Yeah. I think that's quite common. That's the kind of thing that sometimes has the reverse effect, though, and they, they go into prison and they think, hey, this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> they steal more stuff. No, that's insane. But uh, I guess what I was trying to say is that, that sometimes those tactics backfire, do you know? Yeah, yeah. And you can build up a certain amount of resentment against your parents and that makes you reoffend. Is that what happened to you with the gum? I think so, because I do have slightly light fingers. Do you? Yeah, and I've done a little bit of... Cr- criminals in my time you know i do like the feelings of guilt though here's another good one when i was about six or seven i was i was in the natural history what i was on a natural history school trip in the gift shop i took a key ring gemstone i think that's a place where these things often happen in a museum gift shop uh-huh. uh because they've got some very fancy key rings in those places it's always busy there's lots of children around there's very a confusion alluring. I took a keyring gemstone. A police car seemed to follow the coach all the way home, and I was so sure they'd come to my house, I forced my parents to take me back the next weekend so I could put it back without anyone knowing. Where? Ah, that's sweet. X. M. This is XFM. Hey there, uh, we're back at the mega store. We've bought some things, and we're going to try and steal some things, and we're just in front of the metallic security gates. Now, I've got a plan. What's your plan? Well, they're not very efficient at demagnetising the magnetic tags, right? Right. Many's the time when you leave a shop, the gates go off. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. And you've legitimately paid for the thing. That's right. That's what I'm going to say. I'll say I paid for them. They're going to want to see your receipt. I lost it. No, that's no good. What do you mean that's no good? I genuinely lost it. No. But I lost it. No good. Can you prove that I didn't lose it? Can you prove that you did? Let's take it to court, bitch. Let's. Or, what? Instead of a lengthy court proceeding, maybe you'd like to pay for the goods that you just nicked. Or, instead of a lengthy court proceeding, maybe you'd just like me to take... Allow me to take home the goods that I just legitimately bought. Prove it. Prove it. You prove it. You prove it. You're in my shop. You're in my space. (laughs) Givebike.com? What? Give me the money for that hip-hop album you just Don't nicked. talk to me like that. 
Okay. Otherwise, not only will I sue you for wrongful arrest, but I'll sue you for defamation and shouting at me and spitting in my face and probably giving me herples. Herples? Yeah. All right, sir. You've had your say. You've had an opportunity. I'd like to see the manager. You've had an opportunity. I'd like to see the manager. You can see the manager after I show you this. A security tape of you stuffing that hippo hopple album <laughs> into your pocket and into going nowhere pockle. near I the counter. I stuffed the hopple in my popple. And you had no intention of paying for it. How do you answer that? I did not do that. I sit... I, uh, Look, there's you picking up the album from the hip-hop section. There's you walking out of the shop. And there's no sign of you going anywhere near the counter. <laughs> OK, well done. My name's Steve Jarvis. Uh, I'm from Virgin Head Office. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Is that how you get out My of name's it? Stephen Jarvis, Virgin Head Office. Uh, I'm part of the plain clothed uh, mystery security shoppers. assessment. They call them mystery shoppers. No, I'm not a mystery shopper. I'm the security <laughs> assessment officer. Right. Undercover security assessment. I assess the security personnel in the shop. Do you, do you? What's your name? Uh, Alfred. Alfred. You've done very well, Alfred. Can I see your ID, please? Uh, I've lost it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've lost it. But anyway, here's the hipple hopple from the pockle. And I'll be off. Bye. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Channel 891. On DAB Digital Radio. Worldwide at XFM.net.